this 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 major repair just pretty much took you o over or under. Uh, yep. Yeah, almost took me out, man. And then it was a free repair. You know, it was a warranty. So not like I was paying for nothing. I just, it was the waiting game. Wow. It was the whole waiting game. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Somebody, it don't matter. Always evaluate your situation. What's going to work for you? Because it may not make what I what got to work for me may not have to work for you. What's good, yo? Can't stop. What's up, man? Ain't nothing, man. Trying try to put my head above water. That's all, man. Rolling. Uh, you say you trying to keep your head above water. You still, uh, you yeah. you still you still trucking? What's what's up, would you? Yeah, I'm still trucking, man. Oh, okay, okay. I, um, shoot, I went. Yeah, ended up having to drop my authority last summer. Um. I was about to damn lose every damn thing. I sold my hopper, got rid of my authority, and um, my truck was being rebuilt. And it was on some bullshit. They took all summer to do it. So I was end up being out for four months this <sighs> past summer and got my truck back, and I'm back to pulling these tanks, these sea tanks, my ISOs, and um, okay, okay, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's back up right quick. You, you just threw a lot at a brother, man. <laughs> no more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. I like, God <laughs> damn it, man. Like, wow. I just, jeez. All right, all right, all right. Uh, yeah. So the the last time we, we 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 got together was what about a year ago? About uh, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, back then. Yeah, something like that. Back then, you 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 had your own truck and your authority. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so that was last year. Yep. Okay. 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 So, what happened? What went downhill? Like, uh, you man, you almost went bankrupt. Well, what's what's going on? Take take me back, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm, yeah, I almost. Man, I uh, I damn uh, trying to trying to you know playing that catch up game, you know, and then I start having some repairs that need to be done that weren't you know on the warranty because you know I bought that glider. And um, trying to get some stuff done, went on vacation, come back, truck still ain't right, motor goes, like the uh, wrist pin and number five went. So it was a whole big shit, and they, and they didn't come to find out, they didn't even attach this this uh, motor uh, to this truck when I bought it, because it was a glider. So the warranty was never really truthfully activated for the motor. Wow. So spent two and a half weeks doing that. Spent some time waiting to get parts in. One thing came in, a head came in. It was still, and it was a bad, uh, had a bad exhaust valve on it. So they had to send for another one, come back, whatever, whatever, whatever. So they finally get my truck ready at the end of July. But I'm like, I done ran out of money trying to keep the bills up from May, June, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And Bro, this payments is, here, this, payments, this, is you know, like, this is owner operator chronicles right here, man. Like owner operator one. Yeah, it is. It's this, real life. This this real life. It's like, real life. You you literally, you know, even after buying the truck and and had some owner operation successes, it's it sounds like this 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 major repair just pretty much took you all over or under. Uh, yep. Yeah, almost took me out, man. And then it was a free repair, you know, it was a warranty. So not like I was paying for nothing. I just, it was the waiting game. Wow. It was the whole waiting game. So, like, I've been trying, I've been playing catch. Even though I bought this truck, I was still trying to play catch up. Even after I bought it, and I was doing decent. But, and, and, and like I said, like, it was real life, man. Like, when fuel prices catching up, you know, the way they were, uh, rate ain't where they should be. Uh, I was talking to my homeboy, which he had me at a good rate at five percent. But you figure up five percent, and what I was doing, that was like over fifteen thousand. I was paying him a year for nothing. He was literally just writing a check. So I was still paying my own insurance. He wasn't paying insurance through that either. So I was literally paying him five thousand dollars writing me a check. So that's why I was like, man, fuck that. I'm going to get my authority, so I could put that own money toward, you know. I was already pretty much paying my insurance payment only went up like two or three hundred dollars, which wasn't nothing compared to the fifteen thousand. Now, for the people that don't know what authority mean, what what what's getting your authority? What what do that actually mean, and what's the process of getting that? Um, 
just pretty much um, you're not just won't be an owner operator at that point. You just technically become a carrier. So um, and you end up doing carrier packets to get con- different contracts with different companies. But so to go back, you got to file your MCS one fifty, which is you know your paperwork with the DOT. So you get your your DOT numbers free. Then you got to go get your uh, motor carrier. Um, uh, man, it's slipping my mind, slipping my mind. But then you have to get your actual authority. So that part you got to pay three hundred dollars for. Um, and if there's anything that you need help on, pretty much that's that's uh do the paperwork for free. Um, so you file those two side documents. Then you got to do your BOC three, which is pretty much a legal document. So if you get into litigation or anything like that or any lawsuit, they pretty much um, are your your middle point to where they convert what's going on into your state's language. Um, so you got to have the BOC three. Then you have to have your you know your insurance. But in order to have insurance, you got to have your equipment. So it's one of those things you kind of have it, have to have everything lined up before you can do one or the other. So you got to have your insurance and then you got to join the drug consortium. So those are, that's the package deal pretty much of what you got to have done before you get your authority or approved for your authority. It normally takes about three or four weeks. What is the, what is the point of getting your own authority? I mean, what, I mean, you already, you, so, you already a owner operator, you already own the truck. Why not just uh, just lease on with a company and just make money that way? What What is the point of getting your own authority? So I would tell you twofold. It is, first of all, you need to evaluate your situation. So this is, and this, that, that's what I, you know, and I'm always like, do I need to do this? Do I need to do this? And then you have to evaluate, is this working for me? So in some cases, not having your own authority would be beneficial. If you don't want to do the paperwork, if you, um, you, you just want to call in, get a load and go, but still have the, the, the say so over your truck in some aspect, and I'll say some aspect, um, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but then I would say, you know, if the leasing, you know, the lease agreement or, or if, if the if contracting on or leasing on to a company would be better for you, then that's what you need to figure out. But for me, going to authority is I hate a company looking over my back. I hate having them determining how much money I'm making. I like to pretty much be in charge of my own decisions. If it fails, I'd rather it be my fault. I don't want to be out here screwed over because I know you didn't do your job or somebody else didn't do their job, so it's falling on me. If I didn't do something, then I know whose fault it is. It's nobody's fault but mine. So you learn, it helps you evaluate, make, you know, making decisions on be, uh, better business decisions, put it like that. And as you go, you are, okay, I know I can't do this. This happened the last time I did this. Um, it makes you learn your, your, the rates, the lanes, what's moving, when it's moving, pretty much all that stuff. So it makes you really learn what you're doing and having your own authority in every aspect. You're in charge of the paperwork. Paperwork, I don't care. I, I, I do that in my, in my sleep, but it's just you having to learn all those parts and put it all together to make your company run. At that point, you're not just a, a truck owner. You're a, a whole company at that point. Okay, okay. So how much... Getting your own authority, how how much uh, how how much a, a a person that's interested in getting their own authority, I mean, getting their own authority, how much would it set them back altogether? Mm. So the trick to that, well, one piece. So the the DOT number is free. The the the, the uh, actual motor car the authority part. Um, where you get your MC number, uh, your motor carrier number, uh, that's $300. Uh, you're looking at that, plus the trick to the BOC3 is if you're a member of OIDA, and they're, they're a great source, I mean a great source, because 
a lot of people will be like, I'll get a truck and then um, I'm just going to go do this, 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 this. Some people are not realizing that you have to have a, a driver packet on yourself. So there's things that they'll help you out with. But back to it, um, being a member of OIDA, the VOC3, they'll do it for free if you're a member. So that could be, for, you know, it, it just depends. There's some people that do the VOC3. I don't know what their prices are. I've never done it that way. I've always been a member of OIDA, so I've gotten that for free. So technically about $300 plus your insurance, and it just depends what your down payment is going to be. Um, the last time I did my insurance, I, I think I put down like about right about three grand. Um, and then you got to do your, your tags. It's, it's going to cost you, depending on your state. I know South Carolina, when you first get in your tag, it's going to run you about 17, no, about 13, not paid 13. 1300 was last time when I uh, went back to my own tag. So, um, I mean, that's, that's generally the numbers that you kind of looking at. Like I say, each state with their tags are different. So for totally per- different. And that's so, why some people get main tags. So for a driver that's interested in making that jump, what do you suggest they do as far as uh, you, do you suggest that they start saving up first before they do anything else? And if so, how much you think they should have in a bank as a, as a minimum to get started? So my, so if you're going in, I, I, you know, and there's a couple of guys I, I know, and they, they've been in some situation. They was out like six months. They had no problems. They had that money saved up. So back to what I was saying earlier is you have to evaluate your situation all aspects. What's your overhead at home? What's your overhead potentially with the truck, um, i.e. your payment if you're buying a trailer or if you're going to be pulling their trailer? Um, that's another thing with the, the leasing versus your own authority. You know, you got to – some people do trailer pay. You know, you have to pay for a trailer rental. Some people you don't. Like what I'm doing, I don't have to pay for a trailer or nothing. But you have to take all that consideration. What's your overhead going to be? I would say at least try to have at least six months to a year. At least, um, once you get rolling, get going. As, I always have this thing in my mind: what's the most expensive thing on this truck to replace? The motor. So you look at your drivetrain, right? So motor transmission. So I mean, depending on where you go, you get a motor for thirty. Just say forty thousand dollars will be my number, or is my number to have. Have I reached it successfully? Honestly, no, I have not. Because, like I said, I've been behind the ball trying to catch up with other stuff and life happening. So, um, 40000 that's for your business. That's not for your home. You need to have your total separate money that, that take care of the home, the, the regular necessity stuff. i say six months to a year for sure. And at least, you know, have you know, 40000 And even if you don't have the 40000 right off, but you know, try to at least at least have half of that, you know, because now, you want to be able to at least start repairs or whatever the case may be, or you know. Do you think it's hard? Thing. Do you think it's hard for? Uh, do you think it's Do you think it's hard for a driver that's in his forties, forty five? You think it's hard for them to you know to amass you know, 40 K to start their own, you know, start their own trucking company slash fleet. You think it's much harder for them because, you know, life is everything is going on versus maybe somebody young, say like in their twenties or something like that versus that they don't have no, no responsibilities. You think it's much more easier for them to like start at an early age to save up, so by the time they get to their 30s and 40s, they'll be able to, you know, run a successful trucking fleet or, you know, or a successful uh, authority. So I would say this, it, 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 it's not based on age. Um, I would say it would be based on your personal situation because you could have a situation where you're, like you said, young, single, no responsibilities whatsoever. 
okay, if this is what you want to do, you can go in hard, save up your money, start doing what you need to do. Um, and, and before you're 30, yeah, you can do it, right? If you're 40 and you're in the same situation, same thing applies if you have no responsibility. Now, if you have, you have to, if you're 40 or, or 20, it doesn't matter. If you have a family, you need to take that into consideration because, man, there's so many pieces of this. So you have to take that into consideration, period. If you have a spouse and a, a, you know, a young family, you have to consider, okay, am I willing to sacrifice being away from home? Because I was that kid where my mom was gone three, three, four weeks, five weeks sometimes. So I was that kid. I know how that is. I know how that feeling is. My brother and sister didn't have to go through that because she was local and she was home every day when they were born versus me when I was, what, seven? Yeah, seven. And she started driving. She was gone three, four weeks at a time until I was, what, damn near, what, 14, 15. So you have to evaluate, is your family or your personal situation going to allow you to do that? Or if you have a wife or a spouse or a girlfriend, whatever, that is okay with you being out like that, then she knows the goal or whatever the situation is, he or she knows the goal, you know, and y'all willing to work through whatever it's going to take for you to get this off the ground, to do this, 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 and this, and working as a team. So the age factor, I wouldn't look at, but I would just look at your personal, what you have per- going on personally. You know, I, that, that, that's be the biggest thing. Can't stop, man. We're we going to continue talking about your authority and, uh, and, and the downfall. But you, 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 you touched on a, a, good, uh, a good, interesting topic. Now, a lot of females are coming out into this industry. Majority of them, I'd say maybe around 75% of them, have children. Um, some of them are lucky to have their children with them on a truck. Uh, unfortunately, some others aren't. Uh, you say, you know, from the age of seven, your, your moms got into trucking. How did that make you, how, how did that make you feel with her being gone so long and only coming home for so little? Uh, I mean, it's, it, you just, you know, you really appreciate the time. I mean, you, you miss that, you know, your mom being there, like, and I, you know, even now this age is like, I could tell the different, like me and mom, we have a relationship, you know, we, we do. Um, but it's different, somewhat different with my brother and my sister with them being younger than me. And it, it's, uh, it doesn't bother me, but you do see it. But when you're, when you're going through that time as a, as a, as you know, as a kid, it's like some, there's some times where you need your mom, like, or you just want your mom or something half you know, happening. And, you know, it's, it's just like, you just want to be with your mom. So you're not saying anything, you know, against my stepdad, but cause that first, at one time they were on the road together. So I was really home with my grandparents. So we kind of just stayed in that, in that, in the house with them so that I'd be taken care of while they were teaming at one time. And then, um, and then my stepdad ended up coming off and then my mom ended up, you know, coming off eventually after that. But, um, so he can kind of be there with me. My mom, she enjoyed the road, stayed out on the road, but it's just one of those things of you, you as a kid, it's like, you want your mom there. Like, I've already, I've been to the situation where, you know, playing football in junior high where it's like, you want your mom at your game, but mom at work. <laughs> so it's, it's just one of those things like you end up having to deal with. It's tough at times, but, and you, you know, end up pushing through. Yo, your mom, uh, over the road truck driver for, you say for, you was seven, she came back off the road when you was what, 14, so seven years? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So doing, so let me ask you this. Uh, what, what is the, what is the difference? Because, you know, some, you know, some kids be like, well, you know, my father's a truck driver. He's gone for, X amount of time, and I'm used to that. But 
mothers on the other hand is 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 much more of a big deal for a kid than it is for their fathers right i mean their their fathers they they kind of get a sense of what they father have to do in order to take care of the family but yeah. the mother on the other hand uh the mother on the other hand is pretty much the you know the catalyst of the house the matriarch of the house you don't you don't see that yeah. you know her being gone for you know for weeks or you know weeks at a time what, what what's the yeah. difference what do you think is the difference between or is there a difference between mother and fathers uh being um, charged i would say to an extent because every kid wants their father so i it, so my, the 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 backstory to where for me it was my mom is because my uh my dad well my biological dad wasn't around so i had uh a guy stepped in when i was uh not even born yet or right at being born that stepped in so all i knew him is to be my dad so I would go to his house on the weekends, you know, some weekends and, you know, stay with him all throughout, you know, as long as I can remember. So that was my dad. But me, to stay outside of that, so in the house, it was just my grandparents, me and my mom. So my mom, ever since I was born, my mom had me young, but she always worked. So I understood, yes, my mom was at work, my mom was at work. But then when your mom is at work, rolls over from mom being at work until at night or in the afternoon or whatever the hours are at a regular type job. Or, you know, I remember she worked at Caldor one time when her, I think her first job I used to go to was at Burger King. Um, just, just, you know, when she was young, but the, the fact is when it goes from being like a regular something that she's home every day or is going to be home every day to being over the road, that changes. Because now you had this relationship with mom from the time you're born to, you know, seven years old to where mom is home every day. And then now all of a sudden now mom is going only home for like two days out the month. You know, it, 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 it it's a big change for a kid that's used to their mom being there. Mm-hmm. All right. So. All right, so can't stop, man. So your authority, your I mean, the, your authority you had to give up. Uh, I mean, what, 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 you know, because of the truck being down and and everything. Did you did you have to give up the truck as well? No, no. I um, you know, I made some phone calls. I was able to get some money. When you got some people behind you that's really on your team, you know. They look out for you. Um, so I had to support at home with that. Uh, then I, um, one of my homeboys uh, I met in the Hopper gang. That That's where my heart is, man. With Hopper bottles. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Tank. That's what no, I do. You, no, you good. Uh, dry vans, reefers, I ain't got nothing against y'all. Uh, <laughs> flat vans, I ain't got nothing against y'all either, but. Hoppers, man, where's that? If I'm, you know, I, I want, if I go back into my story, that's what I'm going back to. But um, one of the guys I've met, man, uh, he and I kind of jailed. Um, my boy Jelly out of, uh, out of, uh, I guess it's considered Garrysburg, uh, North Carolina, man. Um, he got a couple of drivers up under him, and he and his wife are really good people. But uh, I called him up. I was like, you know, I was telling him, I was like, man, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get my hopper up. And he was like, man, he said, I'm looking for, you know, I, he said, I done made, you know, I did pretty good this year. I got to spend some money. So I'm like, all right, cool. So now let me stop you um, right there. Can't stop. Like, well, let, much- let me stop you right there because a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of new drivers and may, maybe some older drivers, I guess. But what, what do you mean by hoppers? Do you mean the, the little uh, pup trailers that's being pulled doubles. What do you, or is a hopper is a, a specific trailer? Explain that. Yeah. So the hopper is, uh, hoppers are mainly using ag- agriculture. So um, primarily, like your, you may hear hopper or grain wagon um, out there. So pretty much they haul, you know, hauling agricultural products, anything from wood pellet to uh, corn, wheat, flour, rice, sugar. Uh, the, 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 I call it, you know, pet food, pretty much the powder, 
powdered uh, turkey meal, cookie meal, um, shit, uh, beef, uh, salmon meal, anything that goes in the pet food, <laughs> um, okay. citrus pellet, fertilizer, cotton seed for cow feed, like anything, a lot of stuff dealing with agriculture. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's in the family of an end dump. So you have a tarp. It could be manual or electric on top. You'll roll it back, dump product on the top, and you bottom load. So you'll see that's why it has this big, it's like the, the top of a pyramid at the bottom of the, of the hopper down there. You will be roll the doors open, product dumps out most times into a pit. Sometimes you dump it on the ground, depending on what you got, what you're doing. Okay, okay. Um, so, bro, man, how, how, how do we get into that? Like, I mean... I mean that. I mean, where where do we go? Where, where do we look? What what where do I Come Google on. search? Like, and and how much? Like, is that? Do we get paid by the? Do we get paid by the mile? Do we get paid by uh, percentage? By the uh, do we get paid by the by the, the, ton. By by the, the ton. ton? Okay, by the ton. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, by the ton. But so I take my ton. You generally, um, I had a, so there's several sizes of hoppers. So I had an 84, um, 84 inch high hopper, which is, I can say pretty tall for a road, a road hopper, but it's kind of tall for a road hopper. Cause some places you can't get in a lot. Most places you can, I'm not going to say that you can't, but most places you can't get in, uh, your stacks need to be, your, your exhaust stacks on your truck need to be short. Some places can't be over 12, six. So uh, sometimes you have to go around the building and back in the, the exit side and up, you know, to get loaded. I've had to do that several times. Um, so, and be careful dumping bags up, going up under bridges some places. Yeah, I, I had some experiences, but an 84 inch high sleeper, I mean, a, a hopper, um, it's pretty big, you know, it can be pretty big, especially if it's one, 102 inches wide, which is wider, you know, same width of a regular drive van. Mine was a little bit smaller than that. So, but however, I say all that because it goes into the volume of product that you can haul. So, if I had something like wheat mids, which is very light but it's fluffy, when you put it in the trailer, if you have something smaller than an 84 or um, 8496 is what I had, or if you have like a 78 inch high or with a 102 wide you can probably get right at 25 tons my general rule of thumb is most loads they calculate at 25 uh, when they give you like a flat rate they calculate it at 25 um 25 tons so then you have to break that number down so uh, I'm, I'm just trying to give some easy numbers so if you had a load that was um then $3,500. So we do $3,500 divided by uh, 25 would equal $140 a ton, right? Um, so then if you go on $3,500 divided by, just say you go 550 miles, uh, uh, 3500 divided by 550, that would equal $6.36 a mile. Do you need some type um, of uh, and in, just, do you need some type of endorsements to 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 uh to pull Harpers? No endorsements. No endorsements. This is regular. This is just just like you pulling a drive in. <laughs> it's only forty three foot long. Most of your hoppers are all between forty and forty three foot long. There are some forty eights and some uh fifties out there. Those are rare. Those mainly use those out west. You don't see those on the east coast too much. And you'll see some that are split axle, but most of them are tandem axle on the east coast. And if you see one from the East Coast, you know they're from the Midwest or the West Coast. Wow. Hoppers. Okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. All right. Yeah. So. But. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's, it's a whole nother low board. You know, they got a low board out there. Um, I get into it, but it's a whole nother low board. But you you utilize the load board just like with, every, like, just like when you with, with a drive van. You utilize the load board until you get, you know, and with these brokers, and then you don't have to utilize um, the low board, or you start going to customers and you start doing stuff direct. Because I did some direct stuff, 
Um, and, you know, and you have to evaluate that. It, it, with pulling anything, you need to evaluate your your situation too. With having direct freight, because no matter what, you're going to come back to direct. You ain't got no back calls. Your back call fall through, then and you still got that contract to haul that freight one way. You might take a L. So you have to be careful with direct freight sometimes too. That's another day, another story, for another day. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. I about lost my stuff on that one. Oh. Um, but however it goes, uh, low boards out there getting direct with customers, start getting direct with some of these shippers. Um, when I say customers, you know, the shipper order receiver side. Um, and, and it's, it's, and like when you, and, and I had a broker, um, I won't name their name, but I was running some stuff for, you know, a set price. And then times changed. I'm like, and I realized how I was shooting myself in the foot. This is when I first got into the game. And he, was, he came at me. He was like, uh, well, you used to haul it for this price right here. I'm like, yeah, but you see these fuel prices? I am not hauling your stuff for free. Like, I'm not paying to haul your stuff. Like, it's not happening. You know. I said, so you can go get somebody else to do it, but I ain't doing it. You know, it's, 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 it's hard when you when you first come into the game because you're hungry, you you want to be competitive right, right. and all like that. And at the time, being the new uh, owner operator in any aspect of not just trucking, but in any aspect of business, mm -hmm. you're you're trying to, you know, do uh, a set amount so that you can get your name out there. But as you grow. Right. As you grow and as you in, and as you getting more and more uh, expenses, it's gonna be hard to 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 do what you do at that price that you start. But it's unfortunate to right. try to negotiate that with with your current uh, clients because they are so used to you doing it for that price. Now what they're doing is. Oh, okay, well, ten dollars. Uh, well, th let's use me for example. Um, sixty dollars to do a tire change. Uh, okay. Uh, well, we. Well, hold on, right quick. Let Let me call you back. They They trying to find somebody right. to do it for thirty. All right. They find. They. they guess find what I did. Guess what I did. As soon as he did that, mm -hmm. I made another phone call to get another load. Yeah, that's what you. Yeah, that's what you. Exactly, I agree, exactly. That's what you're supposed to do because you got you you got more clients, uh, more opportunities to move. But I'm talking about like me, for example. Like all of my clients are like at a set price that I gave them when I first came into the game. As far as doing road service, back then it wasn't as much of a competition as it is now. Back then. I was getting like sixty dollars a pop, eighty dollars a pop. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But then, now you know people, more and more people coming in and over here saying, "Oh, okay, well we could do a tire change for thirty dollars, or we could do a tire change for twenty five dollars." Now when they come back to me because I already set my price because I was being Listen, I, I was being competitive because somebody else before me was doing it for a hundred dollars. You see what I'm saying? So I came down mm -hmm. to like sixty dollars. Now I I got more trucks, I got more cars, I gotta pay people now, I gotta pay a uh I gotta pay a firm to do my dispatching now. So they taking like ten uh five, ten dollars a dispatch. I gotta pay them. I gotta pay my drivers. I gotta pay them for going out to yep. do the calls. More so, calls. You know, so now my my cost, my you know, my person uh what do you call it? Uh uh profits. Yeah, your overhead getting, going up. Yeah, my overhead going up and my profits is going down. So I had to come back to them to renegotiate. Hey, I, I I can't do it at sixty dollars no more. I I gotta do it at I gotta do it at eighty or 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 seventy five. I gotta do something. 
But then you got these solo nuts out here that's coming out here doing it. You know, well, we, we could do a tire change for twenty five dollars. We could do a tire change for ten dollars. We could do a lockout for for thirty dollars. Bro, you you mess around and you you mess around and mess up a locking system on one of them expensive ass cars. You you done for thirty dollars? Come on now. And get and guess what? So in that same situation, let me tell you what worked out for that broker because he would mm -hmm. do that, right? He would say that very thing. Oh, let me call you back. So, okay, cool, no problem. I can't say what I used to do, right? But the level of service that I had. And I will say this, the level of service I had, something that needed to be there, it got there. Don't ask me how I got there, but it got there. You know what I'm saying? So the level of service I provided, you can't beat it because you know it's going to be done. It's going to be done right, and it's going to be there when it's supposed to be there. Right? So when you provide a level of service, and they try to go get somebody else to do it, and they realize that, oh shoot, he got it done, but it's not at the quality of service. Right, it's not at the quality of service. Yeah, his, that his you trailer can was contaminated. Right, uh, he didn't get there on time. He still was a day late. Uh, whatever the case may be, his truck broke down. He ain't reliable. So. Here they gotta come back to you because of the level of service you provided. And pay your price. And that's what happened with them. I would I would literally tell them, no, nah, I can't do that. Go find somebody else. And I could tell him that with confidence because I knew what I did and I had pride in my work. That's another thing when you have your own authority, you take more pride in what you're doing. Because it's your name on the line. That's all you got. It's your word name. Is, word is your, your word when you're out yep. here. Right. So when it's Joe Blow's company, you just working for him, you're like, I don't give a damn what happens. Oh, I don't care if I get pulled over for this. I don't care if this, this happens or whatever. This is the equipment. This, when, when that whole thing is yours, it's a dude on Facebook. Um, it's a, it's a, a black guy. He had a, I think it was a, a yellow, and I think it was yellow or yellow and gray peat with a stainless steel uh, a reefer. And it was one of those things about the, e I think it was dealing with e-logs or something like that. But his thing was when you have invested damn near almost, at that, he had like three, almost 300000 in his truck. I can't remember the guy's name. But when you have money invested, that is your rolling investment. You think I'm going to do something to, to tarnish my name, to, to, to mess up my truck, to, to not be able to work or to get into accidents, mess up my name or or whatever the case may be. But in other words, you want to take pride in what you do in every aspect of it. In every aspect of it. So when you do that and you provide that level of service and they can see their product coming in and something looking good, uh, at least they clean, you know what I'm saying? I've never had no complaints from customers. They're going to come back That's and pay the up. price because you provide that level of service. That's what's up, man. Can't stop coming in with the with the with the with the jewels. That's what's up, man. Um, so what? So what? I mean, how? You know, even though you lost your authority and everything, I mean, how how are you doing now, man? Like, I mean, how how has it been going since uh, last year? And, man, it's been a still roller coaster, and it's just real life, real life roller coaster. So, I'm out for the four months over the summer, May. June, July, August. Start back, at least on this company here. I used to work with a few years ago. Um, so I worked September, October, November. Trying to get stabilized. December, run a couple of loads. I'm coming back out of West Virginia, long story short. Um, come out of the uh, toll booth at the top, the first toll booth when you're coming back down West Virginia on 77. Uh, come around the curb. Didn't know what was going on. It's, it's, Slightly wet, come around the curb, 65, 60, somewhere in there. Uh, didn't know it happened, no emergency vehicles on site. A skateboard lost his load uh, of uh, scrap aluminum uh, bales uh, in the left lane. I'm in the left lane, cars beside me, it's wet, 55, 60. 
it's nowhere for me to go. I stayed in my lane, took the blow to the truck, who knocked the hit about seven of them out the out of the road, six or seven of them knocked them out of the road, off to the side that was in the lane, and there was nothing you could do. But hold on and keep it in your lane, make sure you don't hit all the cars, get nobody else involved. So it's like I was mad about it, but I wasn't, you know, mad. Like stuff happens, life happens. So it happens. I pull over, wait for the highway patrolman to come there. The wrecking crew that was there said, you know, everything's good. We'll pull out the bumper. We don't see anything else. I had to replace my steer tires right there on site. Couldn't leave because they had gotten, well, one of them had gotten cut. So now I don't run with mismatched tires. So I had to get two tires replaced right there on the spot. Um, so I, my steering wheel was turned. So I was like, I don't know, something, I hope, you know, nothing's internally really wrong with my gearbox, but I wanted to get it checked out. So. I was on the way to get some another repair done, so I got that repair done. Took it over to the shop, to to a uh, um, to a collision place. They evaluated everything, saw everything, um, what was going on, and called me back. Says, "Yeah." Now, remind you, I drove the truck because I was like, "I'm not gonna leave my truck up here." <laughs> right. And they said everything was okay, so I just took my time, eased on down, got it down to the shop in Columbia. Let let me pull um, let me let me let, let me pull you back for a minute. Now this this ha- this accident happened when? Again, this this past December. Oh, okay. So, uh, the the flatbed was already off the side of the road, pretty much, and you you he was off the side. So where, the way the situation was, when you come around, when you come out of that tow booth. It kind of goes as up a slight incline, and then it comes down, but it's down into a curve, a right curve. So it's blind. You can't even see straight down the road, no distance yeah. at all. You just yeah, go around that's the 70, curve. Yeah, seventy. So he dumped I'm his load out into that. yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So he dumped his load out in the left lane, and I didn't see anything. And then by the time you get around there, where cars are breaking, there's already they're passing by some of the stuff in the road, and there's cars beside you. So there's nothing you can do. Well. Hold that, you know, hold the wheel and hold your lane and make sure you don't get nobody else involved. Gotcha. Um, and, and my, my, the, the terminal manager went back and looked at the video on the camera in here and he was like, you literally had no, nothing to do and nowhere else to go. I was like, yeah. So you, I, you, I could not you do wasn't, anything. you, you wasn't hit with a preventable. No, no, I wasn't hit with anything. Okay, cool. He got hit with a ticket because he failed to secure his load. He only had one strap on six bundles, six bales of a scrap aluminum. What? So he is supposed to have chains on it. And, or if he had the, uh, if he did, I think if he, I think she said, if he did have straps, he should have had two straps per set of bales he had with the weight he had. Just to make sure it was secure. All right. So back at the, uh, back at the shop, what, what, what they, what they trying to tell you about, about your truck? So, so they told me, they told me now, they told me the truck is deemed not drivable. Okay, cool. Go ahead and order the parts. How they already had the insurance on the, you know, on the deal, whatever. Um, we got, I'm like, Hey, what's the status? They were like, Hey, um, yeah, we well, need a steering. Well, they had already told me I need a steering gearbox, uh, and a, a Pittman arm. And of course the bumper. Um, so the gearbox is on national back order. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, <laughs> what? Damn, so national, like, yeah. So I waited. I just got they yeah national back order. So I was like, I don't know if this dude just pulling my leg. Let me call around some places and see if I can find one. National back order. So is this still Everywhere on back order? So it's still on back order now as no, we I, speak? I'm literally coming back off my first run. Oh, God damn it, man. I literally, I was talking to my homeboy about this yesterday. I said, I only worked, literally worked six months last year. For my truck being down last year. How much, how, how much of a hit you took from that? Gross? How much of a gross hit I took? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Ah. Uh, you, you, I bought a hundred and sixty. Oh my god. So uh, since uh, what you what you was doing in the meantime? I mean, was you just you just went back to company driving in the meantime? Nah, I was chilling at the house, man, and I was trying to put pressure on. Cause he, and this is the thing that got me over the uh, the summer, and this is why I did not. And I even considered. I mean, and I'm gonna be real life with you. You know, me and my cousin, we talk about it all the time. Like, you damn near almost better off going working at McDonald's and sometimes driving a truck. To be honest with you, fuck man, please. When you break you down how much that. you make an hour, no, no, no. I was at no in my mind. If it honestly, if I would have known it was gonna be that long, I probably would have went and just got me a little something, a little job to do. I sure would have. I would have. I, I literally stayed home because. It's like when you call the dealership, you're trying to get this stuff situated, trying to get that situated, making sure, and they're telling you, okay, we're going to have it out, we're going to have it out, we're going to have it out. Oh, here's a hiccup, we're going to have it out, here's a hiccup. By the time I would have put an application in somewhere, because now, granted, June is one of those months where every day I'm trying to get this warranty stuff figured out for two and a half weeks. So we're almost in the June. And we get it situated. It's like, okay, well, we just got to, you know, we're going to get, you know, got some of the parts in and then they get hung up on parts. They get together and then the head was messed up. So it's like, I was on, I was on the edge. I was, I was, they had me at mercy of their hands. Like we might be ready to go next week. We might not. And then we come the next week and they know we're not ready. It might be next week. And so it was like, by the time I get a job, my truck is going to be ready for the process of getting hired on somewhere. But if you if you so, knew about if you knew about all of that beforehand, you probably would have got something part time to hold you over pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I was at the house whole summer, chilling. Not chilling. What I need to do around the house. God damn it, man! Ooh, ah, right. yeah. That's that's owner operating. This is that's, real life. That's, that's real life. Owner this, operating. Right. I mean, you know. That that one accident, that one part, that 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 one mechanical failure could put you under for yeah. for 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 a good minute. And now you 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 yeah. over here like where the money you know, where the next paycheck gonna come, you know, did I did do I have any money yeah. in the bank? Or even if I do have some money in the bank, the money in the bank is slowly depleting. Because I don't have no money well, to put back, back in, in there. Right. 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 Woo, yeah. can't stop, man. I mean, and I'm, and I'm be real with you. When mm -hmm. I was trying to, I was, and I said I was catching up, I had some months. Like, I went back and looked at last January. No lie. I was running, like, two loads. I was doing two runs a week out and back to the Midwest. Two loads a week. And I only did that for two weeks in January. And I grossed 30000 right? So, I'm like, well, damn. Where did that go to? I go back and look. By the time you break down truck payment, trailer payment, insurance for truck and trailer, and then here was the big thing, fuel. It's like, damn. Right? Ooh. And then you had your personal life going on, whatever you got in your personal life. I got some expensive bills. I do. I, I got some, I got some, yeah, I got some stuff I, <laughs> I went and got. I probably shouldn't have got, but I did. So it is what it is. So uh, that's another thing I tell people. Just what worked for me may not work for you. Me nice. making 10000 a week or having to make 10000 a week may not be your number. Your number might be 5000 a week. So that's why you got to evaluate the situation for you. That's first and foremost with anything. Whether you're going to be a company driver, leased on, own authority, whatever. Working for somebody, it don't matter. Always evaluate your situation what's going to work for you. Because it may not make – what I what got to work for me may not have to work for you. Um, so I looked at it, man, and, 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 and through it all, um, I, I kind of looked at it as a blessing too. Because right when – in August, I mean not August, in April of last year, I spent that was the most money I spent in fuel. I spent twelve grand in fuel in April alone. Twelve grand. One truck. Well, you know, 
I can't stop, man. You 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 can't have no successes without failures. Right. I mean, right. You know, I mean, uh, look, look look at you know look at look look at the entrepreneurs. You know, uh, today they they didn't get where they was at if they if they had all successes. They they had to have a couple of failures along the way. And with those failures, oh, yeah. you you take that and you learn from it. So yeah, right see, now you doing right now, like you said, you 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 know you 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 making the comeback. And it sounds like it sounds like you're doing you know you're doing pretty good right now to get yourself back together. Yeah, I I am, and I and I'm not I'm not even tripping about that. But I was saying when I was going with that was that you know I looked at. Just in April, I spent that amount of money in fuel, and I'm like, damn. And then I had to spend another four grand in a repair, uh, getting another radiator put in. Uh, it caught a leak, and some other work I had done on it, on this truck. Um, and right when fuel went to like six dollars ish, and six dollars some places, I wasn't out here having to deal with it. So uh, to me, in my eyes, yeah, I wasn't out here, but I wasn't having to suffer either. And might have still would have put myself in the hole if I was out here running. And that's another thing two people have to realize that just because a load pays a certain amount, man, like people, sometimes you got to find that threshold because some people think running, 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 running is always the key. You got to run smart. Whether it be run and uh you may have to sit or if you and to get another load that's really paying like that, or I, I don't, I always work my way out and back. I, if I leave home, I got something to come back home. I, that, that's just me. Um, and I'm not going for less than this dollar, dollar amount period. But sometimes trying to get those extra loads in, in between may not be the key. They may kill you. You know what I'm saying? They may really, may really hurt you. Um, I had, I, I remember one time and it kind of like broke me, um, almost broke me really. I had a good pain load going out and I was like, well, shoot, since I'm going here and I had a good load coming back where I was at 10 miles away, there was a load to be picked up that was going in the same city. I was, um, when I delivered at the first one, there was a load to be picked up 10 miles away going, delivering to the city. I was picking up my next one, come back home. Why not get this extra eight hundred dollars? That eight hundred dollars almost cost me that forty five I had coming back home. Mm. That's what's up, man. Can't stop, man. Always coming with the knowledge, woo, and the jewels, my guy. Coming with the knowledge and the jewels, man. Yep. Thank you very much. I mean, that's. I mean. I, I was driving all day. I mean, I had a, you know, I had a couple of, you know, talked to a couple of, you know, a couple of people and all like that. But man, you you came in and just just made just made my evening, man. I mean, like I said, it's always always a pleasure of uh, uh, just chopping it up with you and listening to the, you know, this, listening to the knowledge that you that that you have, man. Man, it's just real life, you know, I, and. You know, for the most part, I've been around this all my life, man. And but until you getting in and doing this, man, and uh, you know, and and, and I'll say this, I, I'm not knocking any of those guys that that's on the YouTube and talking about their success, man, and how they did this, 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 and this. And even I, I you know, I, and and I'll just say this, not not nothing, you know, bashing him at all, because I'm happy for his his success. Anybody's success, I'm happy for. Never, never envy nobody else on that. You know, I'm always happy. If you win it, I'm a. Hey, I'm, I'm happy for you that you win it, because you win it. But people, everybody can't be an Asian. My, everybody can't be. I forgot the other young guy that was in trucking and he got out and he's doing these things life after trucking. But mm -hmm. you have to realize the sacrifice, the time, their position in their life, man. So, uh, what they're doing. Like I said, if they got somebody on their team or not that's really pushing them or, or able to back them if they fall in some sort of way. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I got somebody that's, that, that got my back 1,000%. You know what I'm saying? 
if it wasn't honestly, if it wasn't for her, I, I, I promise you, I don't know where I would be. But, um, but you gotta have somebody. You gotta have a team, man. It, you can do it by yourself, but you gotta have somebody you can talk to, uh, bounce ideas off to, to give you the negatives or what they feel might be negatives that might open your eyes to some things that you might not have seen or foreseen coming or might could happen to you or whatever in the situation. But with this business, make sure that you thoroughly investigate what you want to do before you jump in. That's Just got to. That's what's up, man. Woo. All right, bro. That's that's it, man. That's it, man. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> So and don't you, forget, you got them people out there that will make it sound good and ain't all good. So make sure you do your research. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> man, hey, I, I appreciate the call in, my guy. I, hey, like I said, I, I, I love the conversation, man. I- Big G's got it locked. Why? Why don't you let me all